All right, so we've done a little vectors in two dimensions. This is in three dimensions. So I'm just going to rotate this around and rotate it up, and we get a new axis here, our Z axis. All right, we're going to look at two ways uh, to talk about a vector in three dimensions. The first one is going to be our Cartesian form, and that's really straightforward, actually. We move along the X axis, so I'm going to take a point here and just move it down the X axis here to say the number three. And then I'm gonna find like a Y coordinate. So I'll change my Y coordinate over here and I'll move it to say four. And finally, I've gotta come up with a Z coordinate here and I'll move that up as well to two. What happens here is that essentially we've walked three, up, uh, three along the X axis, four along the Y axis, and then two into the sky. So I can sort of show that with some little dotted lines here. So uh, do our dotted line out from here, three steps. Another dotted line out from here, four steps. Okay, and this is, um, that point there is a point that we'd be familiar with, three, four on a two-dimensional plane. But then we step into three dimensions and we just have a little dotted line that's going up into space. I'll just show you what that looks like, just so you understand that this is three-dimensional, right? Okay. And so now we have our three-dimensional vector that looks like that. All right, so let's take a look at it, just make sure we understand what's happening. You can see, there we go. It is a three along the x-axis, four along the y-axis, and two up into the sky in the, the z-axis. Now, that's probably the, the most traditional way to sort of look at it like that. To write this is to say that vector v is equal to 3i plus 4j plus 2k. Now normally I'd put some little squiggly bits under the i, j and k, but not too bothered at the moment. Uh, another way to show this would be to write it in like a column matrix. Here's our second option here. We can say that it's vector v equals 3, 4, 2. Really economical way to do it. Obviously I just want you to understand that all of this can take place in all of the different quadrants. Negatives, positives. We can move it over here like that. Uh, we can move it down there underground kind of thing. Uh, so we've got like eight quadrants to deal with here and all of these negatives, positives. We can move it wherever we need to move it. All right, that is a three-dimensional vector in component form. But there is another arguably more awesome way to talk about vectors. Polar form is that more awesome way, in my opinion. Okay, so... Here we have our, our x-axis, our y-axis, and our z-axis again. No change here. But instead of moving along the x-axis and the y-axis and the z-axis and finding where those three things meet, we're going to do something different instead. Now, you've done polar form in two dimensions before, a magnitude and a direction. This time, we're going to do a magnitude and two directions. That's, that's how we get it done. Okay, so I'm going to start from the origin here, and I'm going to create a magnitude. Ooh. Uh, let's make it the magnitude of 4. And you can see sort of my default here is for the vector to move along the x-axis. Now the reason for that is because I haven't rotated it yet. So uh, let's rotate it the way that we did with um, uh, two-dimensional uh, polar. So in two dimensions, we just rotate away from the x-axis anti-clockwise. Now we can rotate through 180 degrees like that. Or we can rotate the other way, um, negatives. So look here, uh, negative 66. Okay, and you can see that negative angle there. And so covering that, we can cover the entire rotation from positive 180 to negative 180 there. All right, so I'll just put it in this quadrant here. So let's make it like 48 degrees. And this is where we now move into three dimensions by introducing another angle uh, phi. All right, so uh, simply we're just going to rotate it upwards uh, from the xy plane. So watch this rotate upwards now. Oh, oh the angle's just playing with me. It's a bit funny. All right, there we go. I've rotated it up by 41 degrees. Now, interestingly, I only need to be able to rotate it upwards from 0 to 90 degrees. And you might be tempted to say, well, hang on, why not go further? Why not go like 91 degrees? And the reason for that is because it's unnecessary. So if I wanted to rotate further than 90 degrees, 
the way that I can achieve that is instead changing this angle, moving it around to there, and then uh, rotating it up to where I need it to, to go there. So uh, if you like, um, this one here, theta sort of does the heavy lifting by rotating all the way around, whereas the altitude only needs to go from zero to 90 and from zero to negative 90 if we wanna go downwards. All right, so there is our quick look at a three-dimensional polar form. Just to formalize it a bit, uh, it's shown with a square bracket, the magnitude of the vector are theta and phi, which in this case at the moment, uh, a vector of magnitude four, 22 degrees rotated anti-clockwise from the x-axis and 43 degrees rotated upwards uh, from the xy plane. Now, because you are a curious person, you'll be wondering, okay, I've got vectors in Cartesian form here. I've got vectors in polar form here in three dimensions. How could I convert from Cartesian to polar? And how could I convert from polar to Cartesian? The version of this one is converting from Cartesian to polar. So if you're converting from Cartesian to polar, you're going to need to be able to find three things. You're going to need to be able to find the magnitude of that vector, which you should be able to do, and you need to be able to find theta and phi as well, and trigonometry, Sokotoa, that's how we're going to find theta and phi. So first of all, uh, let, well, let's just do an example. Let's jump into it. Converting this vector, i minus 2j plus 2k into polar form, I'm going to need the magnitude. So let's say it's vector v. And the magnitude of vector v is going to be equal to 1 squared, plus negative two squared plus two squared, uh, which is going to be, that was easy, it's just a magnitude of three. Now, uh, what about um, the angles that I need? Well, let's look at it first in two dimensions. And when I say let's look at it in two dimensions, I mean, let's just pretend the 2K doesn't exist for a second. And let's just draw this thing, the I minus two J. So I, uh, well, there's my Cartesian plane one across and two down, this is my vector. And what I need is this angle here, right? So uh, how do I find that angle? Well, I can just use tan theta. So I can say uh, that tan theta equals um, opposite, which is two over uh, adjacent, um, which is one. So theta equals shift tan two over one or just two. Now that answer is 63.43, but be careful. We're in the second quadrant there. So we need to have a negative angle. Second quadrant, negative 63.43 degrees, and that's theta. And how to find the altitude height, it's uh, the altitude angle. If we just look at this uh, picture in three dimensions, this is the actual vector we've been talking about. We know the length of the vector itself. We know that that's three. Uh, what else do we know? We know this length here because that's the K component. So that's two. So I can create a triangle there uh, with a, a length there of two and a length there of three. And that angle there is the angle I'm looking for, which is the altitude angle. So coming back over here, we have the magnitude of three. We have the altitude, which is this bit, sorry, the, the K component, which is this bit here. And this is the altitude, the thing that we're trying to find. Uh, so we're gonna use sine opposite over hypotenuse. Sine phi equals opposite over hypotenuse two over three. 41.81. So we've found our magnitude, we found our angle using tan theta, and we found our other angle just by thinking things through a little bit. Uh, if you want, you can sort of build your model on your desk. That's a really good way to do this. Uh, there are some formulas that you can write down if you like. All right, so there's your formula there. You just really want to be careful that you're keeping your eye out here and here and thinking about what quadrants you're in and whether your angle should be positive or negative. So try to engage your brain a little bit. Try to come up with what your vector looks like in 3D space. Uh, that's all that I've done right there.
What about the other way? Let's convert polar to Cartesian form. So here's the vector I'm going to convert. Uh, vector V equals magnitude 12, 45 degrees is our angle from the x-axis, and 60 degrees is our altitude angle here. Now you might want to pause the video here and see if you can figure out what the x-coordinate, the y-coordinate, and the z-coordinate are of point P. And that will tell you what your vector is. Um, okay, pause the video now, try it out. Otherwise, I'm going to jump into it. I'm drawing in some little bits here. Uh, this will give you a little bit of a hint as to how you should go about this. Um, so the magnitude of 12 there. Now, this is, um, if this is vector V, this is the uh, K component of vector V. Um, this length here is the X component. And this length here is the Y component. And this is some length that might be a little bit useful as well. Let's just call it like the length Q. You can see that the easiest one to find here is uh, the height here, the, the Z coordinate, right? Because I've got this angle 60 degrees, I've got this length of 12 here, and this is the opposite side. So it's just a triangle, 60 degrees, 12, and uh, that's the thing I'm trying to find. So simple trigonometry there. We have it, uh, just jumped through a little bit of sine uh, trig. We get 6 root 3 as that length right there. So I'll just write that in, 6 root 3. Now, what can I do to find the uh, this length here, if you like, and uh, this length here? I should have already guessed. It comes down to finding Q. If I can find Q, then I'm in a really good spot. And finding Q is relatively straightforward. Uh, it's just more trigonometry. In this case, it's cos. So cos 60 degrees. 60 degrees is our altitude there. Is equal to over 12. And cos 60 is equal to Q. And that means Q is equal to 6. All right. And now that I know that that length is 6, Finding this angle and this angle, uh, sorry, these things are relatively trivial, right? Because now I have a nice little triangle here. This is 6. This angle is 45. So we can say that uh, sine 45 is equal to opposite, which is our uh, y uh, or our k um, j component over... Um, uh, sorry, this length here, 6, the hypotenuse. So that means 6 sine 45 is going to be Vy to an answer of 3 root 2. Uh, so that's this length here, 3 root 2. And finally, if I want to know this length here, we can use uh, cosine, so adjacent over hypotenuse. So I'm running out of colors here. So we can say that cos uh, 45 equals adjacent, which is uh, the x-coordinate over the hypotenuse, 6. Uh, and that's 6 cos 45 vx, which is also uh, 3 root 2. Um, that is it. That's the end of it. So that's how we've converted from polar to Cartesian. And um, you're probably thinking, like, wait, there must be like some neat formula for this. And there is a neat formula. It doesn't appear on your formula sheet, but uh, you can learn it if you want. All right, so there's your neat little formula there. Uh, now, it's important for me to show you where it all comes from. So uh, the first bit here was this bit, right? And that's the easiest thing to find is uh, your z-coordinate. So that bit there. That's the first thing I did. Now, uh, what about this Q thing? Because there's no Q written here. Where does, where does Q fit into it? Well, look at what Q is equal to. Q is equal to 12 cos 60, where 60 was the altitude angle. And you can see that 12 was the magnitude, right? So 12 cos 60 is here and uh, here and here and here. So all we've done is roll 12 cos 60 into a formula for the x-coordinate, which is, you can see here, cos 45. 
because that 6, that 6 here represents 12 cos 60. So that's where that whole big formula comes from. And similarly here, this formula here, so I'll just match these together. This formula here comes, uh, is uh, this formula. And this formula here is this formula. Now, you know, I'm not a huge believer in all of these uh, formulas. That form does not appear in a formula sheet somewhere, so you would have to learn it if you wanted to learn it. This is just Sokotoa in three dimensions. Think in three dimensions, work with it, and you should be okay. All right, uh, that is polar form in three dimensions and converting from Cartesian to polar and polar to Cartesian.